cheers, hello, and welcome to everybody <laughs> to the Katie's Arms. I have this feeling like a lot of people are on holiday right now. And I'm saying that because I was listening to the radio earlier and it was like, oh, it's me and me and Bob are off to Spain or me and Bob are off to France for the week or me and whomever. And everybody seems to be going on holiday. So I don't know how many we will be, but welcome one and all, hello. I thought we would do some questions and answers today because I'm always saying we'll do that. And then we never do. Um, and also I'm celebrating because the sun is out. Yes, finally some F-bomb sunshine here in the bloody UK where we haven't, I've been moaning like an old cow here at home because, well, A, I've been in the UK for seemingly ages, like literally weeks on end I've been in this country. And I swear to God, it's either been cloudy or pissing down every day. Is that not true? I, Okay, we have to do, we're going to do this whole hot thing as well. People keep saying things about my sexual prowess. We have to stop this once and for all. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> I have been here, yes, ready for fucking Rishi. Let's make a note of that too. I was going to talk about that. Is Rishi ready for us? Absolute twat. Um... So, so much for us to talk about. I don't know. I mean, look, it's been, it's been shit weather forever and now it's sunny for a week. So hooray, hurrah, hurrah for that, right? And what's the first thing I hear on the radio today? <laughs> Was the F-bomb some cretin from some government department or, a, you know, clearly a woman with no personality who doesn't even know what the word flange is. If I went up to her and went, vagina! <laughs> She would be like, <gasps> she goes, wah, wah, wah. we must be careful about using water in the UK because it's been a very dry start to the summer. It has not, twat. It's shit it down for literally all of my life. And I've been alive for like 150 years, right? In this lifetime for sure, because I've lived at least three times the speed. It's shit it down every bastard day, hasn't it? It's pissed off. Last week, I, I would go and get it, except I'll expose you to my shorts and they're quite short. <laughs> Another story. Um, they were on a hanger marked medium. I thought it would be fine. Turns out they were small, but I can get into them and that's all I care about. And actually, if people think I look like mutton, go fuck yourself. Anyway, uh, it's been pissing down for endlessly, for endlessly, genuinely has shit it down. Thank you, thank you. You see, this is, here's the thing. There's us, right, us, normal people who know shit, like it's been shitting it down, it's shit, the British weather's shit. And then there's the dickheads that tell us stuff that we know is shit. We know it's not true, we know it's, so it, last week I was mending my wellies with flexible glue. And I am literally 47 years, I know we all think I'm 60, but I'm 47 years old and I was mending Wellington boots with flexible glue. So anybody out there that says like, ooh, you're really hot. I am that lazy. I, I am a woman that mends Wellington boots. But my point is that I was, um, I hope you're all drinking also. Mm. Oh yeah. I was once kind of you, you need to talk about yourselves when I drink, but I was mending Wellington boots a couple of days ago and today some pissy old trout who's probably not had sex in the last decade, whose husband probably hates her, is bemoaning the fact that it's been a very dry down my wine. I daren't because I'm stranded without a bottle. I mean, it's been that kind of week, frankly, darlings, hasn't it? I could drink it through an aerated straw right now. <laughs> Oh, tortilla challenge. I wanted to talk to you about that as well. Um, she's there saying, Ugh, if you use a hose pipe, it's the equivalent to fucking 85 families having a shower. Well, no, it's not. And if we all use one litre yet less a day, oh, piss off. Just, just stop curtailing. I don't care if everyone in the whole of England gets their hose pipes, puts them on full, and aims them at their neighbour who used to clap at the F-bomb sky during the time of COVID. Because I am sick of rule. Any time I hear a rule, 
is starting to make me go a bit funny. So if you want to talk to me about a hosepipe ban, one day into the weather being slightly different to minus 24 degrees, you can F-bomb off as well. And in, in an act of defiance, I've got a good mind, even though it will cost me money, just to go and turn on my hosepipe and just run it down the road. Just as some massive two fingers up to the rules, you know? And I feel that way I received a speeding fine this week. And A, good on me. I drove my son to Goodwood. I bloody hate car shows, but I did it because I'm in the UK and bugger me am I gonna earn mothering points if I can. So I went to bloody Goodwood. I drove all the way pissing there. I went for three days to Goodwood. I hate cars. I hate men with cars, but I loved the whole maleness of it. And I loved that there were bikers there and I loved that there were real men. <clears throat> so that was all good. And I got a kiss from Nigel Mansell <laughs> because I shouted out in order to embarrass my teenage son. I went, give me a kiss. And he did. <clears throat> Came in twice. Love a moustache. Ladies will know what I'm talking about here. <clears throat> if you ever. <laughs> Shall we part that? Anyway, men with moustaches. Marvellous, marvellous. But my point, yes, is that I got a speeding fine. I don't do rules. I don't. I can't. It, it's hurting me that I have to abide by anything. And I'm not. I'm not. I refuse. I refuse to abide by any government. I refuse to adhere to any police rules. And frankly, if anyone injures any of my children, I'm going to kill them. I'm saying it here. Arrest me now. That's how it is. I haven't been drinking. It's just... That's it, I have my own rules for life and everyone else can do one. So, who should be the next Prime Minister? Me, and I want Martin Lewis, whom I used to be kind of critical of. I want him as my Chancellor. And some large military type as my Chief of Defence. Who else do I want? Oh, so, oh, who's that very large, help me darlings? What about women with moustaches? Well, I've never, I've never gone that way. But I suppose it could work. And increasingly, I see my own, you know, when you look in a shop window and you're like, uh -huh. I see some of mine glinting. And I don't, maybe you guys will tell me, is it too much already? Uh -uh. I don't know. So who's that very large Irish boxer, Fury? Mm. I'd have him in my cabinet as well, just to twat people that pissed me off. In fact, that's what we should do. Let's do that. Let's do our... Um, Let's do that for soon. <laughs> let's do that for soon. <laughs> um, let's make up our favourite cabinet. So obviously I'm Prime Minister because oh, I don't believe in rules. Obviously we're having Martin Lewis because he genuinely gives a shit. And where he is is where I am, which is we're running out of time and our elderly this winter are going to die because they can't afford to heat themselves. Anyway, let's not get all dark. And I want... Tyson Fury just near me because he's large and has children every five minutes. <laughs> he's just got to be banging away like some sort of hefty piece of road equipment. It's all terribly exciting. I mean, you're supposed to have, aren't you? One Muslim, one woman, one lesbian, one blah. I can't be doing with any of that shit. I just want lots and lots of British people. Anyway, let's talk about... Anyway, yes, yeah, so I got a, I got a fine... And frankly, I couldn't give a shit. Uh, B, I'm proud of myself for driving faster than I should have. C, my driving was excellent. And we had a nice time, my son and I. And D, if I ever find you, the gentleman sat in a van doing speeding offences on a Sunday afternoon at the bottom of a hill, I have a very special set of skills. And actually, as we drove, I think I mentioned this, did I? Um, I love Bojo, I will talk about that. Um, as we drove past the man in the van, I said to my son, don't ever be, my darling, that, that guy. Be homeless, be a drug addict, be whatever you want to be, darling. Maybe not trans, because I can't be doing it. I mean, really. But, you know, be anything you want to be, darling. Be, be terrible. Be a mass murderer. Do not be the policeman sat in a van, penalising ordinary families just trying to drive their F-bomb son home from a motor event they didn't even want to go to. You know, fine, take my points. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go on a driving awareness course. <laughs> I'm 
Good luck. In fact, I'm going to take this camera. In fact, you know, let's do a Katie's Arms at the Driving Awareness course, shall we? Hmm? Would you want to be that tutor on that day with me in your classroom? Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn up with my HB pencils. You know, those yellow ones with the black lines and the rubber, the eraser. On the end, I'm going to sharpen them. I'm going to get them out one by one like I'm in an exam. In fact, I'm going to go into my driving awareness course with a plastic um, pencil case <laughs> and take it really seriously right up until the point that I lose my shit. In fact, why, why don't we... How do I feel about Nigel Farage? Oh, my God. I could tell you things about that man. Mm, would change your opinions. Uh, but let's just say all is not what it's cracked up to be. Anywho, uh, why don't we get Starky Starky Poos in the driving awareness course? And then that person can get aware of what it's like to have 50-year-old nipples stuck in your face. <laughs> That's the mood I'm in, darling. People say, what mood are you in? That's my mood. Um, you can't say twat on here when mentioning police and cameras. Twat, 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 police, 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 cameras. Twatting police cameras, fuckers. So bollocks to rules, darlings. Live your life without them. Anytime someone tries to tell you a rule, just look at them and go, no, that's not the case, is it? I tried to take back some old £20 notes the other day. Don't ask me why, other than we all need to have stashes of cash ready to go, right? I've always had that because I have to be ready to run <laughs> because who knows? So I was changing over and the bastard fat woman in the bank said, no, no, you can't do that. Oh, yes, I can. Said, no, 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 you have to pay them into an account. I said, no, I don't. Yes, you do. You have to pay them into an account. So there's a paper trail. Why would I have to do pay them into an account that I don't have and create a paper trail for money that is mine? No, I don't. And so, and so it goes on and I just become more and more forceful <laughs> without using the word chumba wumba. <laughs> But these twats behind counters because of COVID, and same in supermarkets, isn't it? You know, they are, they've believed themselves to be, oh, I will make, I will conjure up a rule from my ass, right? I will tell you it. And because of COVID, people have gone, oh, right, yeah, right, oh, right. Whereas, please, my darlings, know that you mustn't do that. What you must say is, no, that's not correct, is it? No, I think you'll find you're incorrect. Yes, I can do this. I am going to do this. Can we bring someone else over, preferably slimmer than yourself, to talk about this? Mm -hmm. And that's what happened. And obviously I exchanged my money, no problem. And, and obviously Chamba Wamba could go away and chew on her rules over her excessively large lunch. Do my kids go to school? I mean, yes and no. Um, not anymore. Uh, well, so I have three children. Surprisingly, I know. What basically happened was I accidentally got pregnant with one. I thought, right, fuck this. I'll have two back to back because then, bosh, get it over and done with. You've got to have a pair. It's a bit like dogs, isn't it? Uh, otherwise, one gets lonely and is spoiled and becomes the twat that no one wants to invite to a party. Straight back on the horse. Boom. Pushed out another one in under, you know, so eight. there's only like literally, you know, nine months and a day between them. Got straight back on the bike. And then my husband left me uh, whilst I was in the hospital delivering my second. We've done this, haven't we? And so I had to find like a whole new life and then eventually find someone who would be sort of a father figure because that's required. So that was that bit of my life. But the point is I have three children. Um, and brilliantly, two by the age of uh, 16 were out of school altogether. One was a year ahead because it just so happened. She was the one that I was supposed to have aborted at eight months. And I was like, no. <laughs> not going to do that and she turned out to be brilliant so did was a year ahead and um, my second uh, daughter is um, going to be a farmer uh, she's a milkmaid <clears throat> and uh, just passed a tractor test at 16 yes so she's rocking um, silaging at the moment if you need any uh, if you need a herd made let me know and then my son hopefully we can get him out of school by 16 so that's my plan for my children so no school and I uh, don't really see eye to eye, to eye and obviously LGBTQ lessons. I think I told you uh, last week we had Miss from LGBTQ lessons. What does she call herself? P-S-H-E. Piece of... 
shit, no, public social health something. Bullshit, 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 bullshit. Anyway, I'll oh, bless you. Read Katie's book to find... Darling, you mentioned it. Hold on. Oh, the shorts are going to... Oh, look how short these little... Can you see? No, you can't. Thank God. Right, yes. My kids. This actually, on that note, and I will know that I'm not... Can you see? Look, there they are. They're quite... Oh, is my fly even done up? See, this is what happens when you get old. You start... When you have a piss, you don't do your fly up. Hold on. Is it up? Yes. Um... I know, right, the tan, dies. the tan is endless. Do you know why? Because I was sunbathing naked in the garden. And my husband came out. <laughs> and I was starky bollocks. And I made myself, because I can't sit still. I know, short shorts. Seriously, hold on. I'm going to mount the piano so you can see. See, look, aren't they marvellous? Um, my husband came out. And so I made the thing with myself, because I have to do this, because I... Obviously, I'm, I'm tediously endless. And uh, so I was like, right, for one hour, I'm going to sit. Ooh, how posh was that? Ah, for what? It's because I've got this shirt on and it's got a high collar. Um, for one hour, I'm going to sit down because I was up at five and then I was like, bah, 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 bah. I'd done a thousand things. And I was like, right, 11 o'clock, I'm going to sit down. So I was in the garden on my lounger and I, um, I obviously naked as naked as the day. Is that what they call it? What is the expression? Naked is the day? I don't know. I don't know. And I was sort of secretly waiting for my husband to come out just for the lol. And he comes out and he goes, birdie. <laughs> like he acts, acts like he's shocked. The reality is me naked sort of... Did I say LGBT lessons? Yes, that's what they are. They're called P-S-H-E. But actually it's just pushing endless LGBTQ. Slagging off Britain. And generally being a fucktard. That's my summary of that lesson. So I sent my son in in an I Love Israel t-shirt. <laughs> they were supposed to be dressed as pride, like rainbows or, you know, I love trans or I'm an ally. So I found my I Love Israel t-shirt because I knew that would really piss her off. <laughs> anyway, yes, in my book, I'm saying this because it's called Help, as you know. Yeah. Um, you can order them and I can write messages to you, which I super love. I wonder if I could... I could even do, look, prints of my nipples. No, let's not do that. But I do talk about lots of, ev well, I over talk about everything. But one of the um, chapters, I'm trying to think. I'm not normal. I think it's that one. Because it's about my, um, my little one. So India, I was told to um, get rid of her when I was eight months pregnant. And you know they did, they used to do, it'd probably be new news to a lot of you because you're so, uh, back to the garden story. Oh yes, there is, a, there is an addendum, great word, to that. But anyway, when I was having India, they did that thing, you know, where they get a massive needle and they shove it right into your belly, which is massive anyway. And they go right into your baby and take some cells. And they took some cells and those cells were wrong. And so they told me I mustn't have my baby that I had to get rid of it at eight months and at eight months like you're properly huge and I was massive and then you don't really think about what that might mean when they say oh just don't have it just get rid of it it's not going to be right and I still have the letter that says Indy would only live um an hour or a day or not at all and she would be born a monster you know that her organs might be born outside of her body and that she wouldn't be right and they gave me this big impression that, you know, I was going to give birth to something so hideous you wouldn't be able to look at it and it wouldn't be able to breathe. Anyway, fuck them, because India's 18 now and bloody marvellous and uh, rocking her world. <laughs> but I write about all that in here and I say that because if you're going through something like that and you do wonder, you know, doctors don't know everything. In fact, I think they know very little. They just like rules and they like their white coats and they like the fact that they feel powerful. But fuck what they have to say as well, really. Just more rules in a book that you don't need to listen to. Yes, but that's all in here as well. And thank you for someone for saying that. And it, it gives me great pleasure to look at her and see her rocking her world. And of course, we're all a bit different. She's a bit different. But she's on her moped, going out to work every day, doing her shitting thing. She came out into the garden when I was naked. And unlike my husband, who went, birdie... <laughs> And then didn't know what to say. Although, admittedly, I was like going, ooh, 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 ooh. 
<laughs> Indy comes out, love her. And this is the kid that's supposed to be a monster I shouldn't have had. And she just was like, mum, do you know where my uniform is? And she did not like, for her, because she's not, she doesn't judge the world according to normal things, which I think is the biggest gift of all. She's just like, mum, I need my trousers. Where are my trousers? <laughs> And uh, my husband was like, mum's naked. And Indy was like, yeah, mum's always doing something like that. Yeah, mum. <laughs> anyway, enough. I don't mean to talk about that. Right. Are we ready for Rishi? Rishi can up right off, can't he? <laughs> He's been plotting this forever. We knew that. I have to let you into a thing that isn't a secret. Rishi is really, really short. And what we need to, yes, exactly, a doctor's practice because they don't really know. And no disrespect, you know, to um, years of study and all the rest of it, but I've been beaten up by, um, you know, doctors and their advice more times. And that's what the book talks about. It's not allowing yourself to be beaten up by people who are telling you things that aren't actually necessarily true. You know, I was told, oh, I shouldn't have her. And then when I had her, I was told she'd be suicidal by the time she was 16 because she'd be alienated and ostracised and that my, ch my child wouldn't make it. And now I'm off on one, aren't I? So don't, don't let yourself um, be made smaller by others who feel important enough to tell you things about your own life because you, probably you'll know best, actually. And if you don't, you'll have meant the best. Anyway, uh, Rishi. So we have to find out, between us, how short is he? My money is on five foot two, which makes, on me, I'm five foot, what's my, five eight, five nine. I mean, depends how fucking angry I am. <laughs> if I need to be, I'm five ten and a bit. But like, I think he's five two. So have a little look, see, and um, I believe Rishi is really small. Also notice he's had enormous numbers of elocution lessons, which I admire, to talk because actually he has a massive lisp, which is totally fine because we're all born different. All I would say is, ready for wifi. <laughs> all I'm saying is, I'm saying about myself, if I had a lisp, <laughs> like I have lots of other, you know, like I'm probably not going to, advertise myself as a nose model anytime soon, right? <laughs> so if I had a lisp, for example, I probably wouldn't want to call myself ready for wifi. Because it just... <laughs> because... It's a... This is so wrong in every way. But... Is it Monty Python? <laughs> So if I was ready, are you ready for this? I can't. I can't take it seriously at all. <laughs> and if I may say, <clears throat> I've had a bit of a sweat on that. <laughs> I've had a bit of a Joey Deke. <laughs> if you're not ready for Wiffy, what are you ready for? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, it's a very base level of humour, isn't it? I'm very sorry. But it's all been a bit much, hasn't it, this week, to be honest. <laughs> I'm just not ready for Wiffy. I don't think I'll ever will be. <laughs> Sorry. Mm. Oh, I really have got a sweat on now. Oof. You know, when you get the sweat under your boobs. <laughs> anyway, I'm not ready for Wiffy. And if you are ready for Wiffy, good luck to you. <laughs> because he built this economy and this economy is utterly fucked. So if you think the guy that says what we need to do is rebuild the economy is the guy who's going to run the country, I just think you're probably more fucked than Boris Johnson. That's really saying something. Um, my worry about this as well, apart from the fact that his nipple height can't speak, is that he's banging on about, eh, I don't know why I've gone all East End, but just go with it. <laughs> is that he's gone all, oh, I used to be an immigrant. <laughs> Son of an immigrant. And do you remember that with Sadiq Khan? Son of a bus driver. <laughs> Brought up in a cardboard box on the middle of the road. <laughs> I'm a son of an immigrant. <laughs> and Sadiq Khan is an utter twat and is literally four foot eight. He's even shorter than Withy. 
and with it wants to tell us he's a son of an immigrant but is married to a fucking billionaire s which is where he got his spondoodles from and he's very smart i mean clearly smart enough to make him and his mates richer in people into poverty by october i mean old people this winter will die from fuel poverty but let's not go there let's not lower the mood poor connection <laughs> poor connection with he is that you is that you fucking with my wi-fi because if that's you fucking with my wife, I'm really pissed off. <laughs> I'm guessing Wizzy doesn't ever get pissed off, does he? <laughs> because if he did, it would be terrible for us. I'm so sorry. People are asking <laughs> what happened there. I know. I know it's easy for, you know, people get dramatic and say they're being watched. <clears throat> but there is no goddamn way I'm not. <laughs> There's still a fat wire out of my F-bomb head from Pakistan <laughs> but let me just say <laughs> no let's not let me just say let me just say I'm actually a bit bored of people telling me they're a son of an immigrant you know what I would really like it if someone stood and said I am British I am British through and through my grandfather fought for this country my father worked the same job all his damn life to try and make my life better. And I am more British than the next man. Do you know what? May I ask for that in a prime minister? May I? May I ask for someone who's just ordinary like us? May I? Because that's actually my stance. I'd like to be a prime minister because I'm about as bloody British as it gets. I worked in McDonald's from the age of 14 and served Bender in a bun at a time before we had to worry whether that might offend the trans community. I was the drive through girl at McDonald's because I needed the cash because no one else was going to fund me through college. I pissed off to Australia for a year at 17 because I was pretty much done with being told what to do around about then and I signed up to fight for my country for 35 years plus, promised them I'd never have a baby and went through the Royal Military Academy to learn what hard really was. <laughs> Boom. That's all I've got, but it's everything. So don't really tell me that you're a son of an immigrant. I couldn't give a shit. Just quite like someone British who cared about British people. And if you're an ordinary British person, I'd quite like to be you to be at the front of the queue for everything and in front of me, actually, because I'm OK. Anyway, got me going there. Right. <laughs> I would. I would be an all right prime minister because actually I just want everyone to be all right. That'd be all right, wouldn't it? Also, if we got going, imagine how quickly they'd kick me out if I did wussy impressions <laughs> at the hustings. <laughs> ah, right, do you know what? We've already come up to our half hour. But you made me feel better because I got to laugh a lot. <laughs> and that was great. Do you know, sometime soon, I can feel it coming on in my bones. We're going to have a serious half hour. Because I was thinking the other day, people are asking me about the speed restrictions on motorways and where's this all heading? And I've never really um, hit that. And I'm going to. So I'll do a 30 minute where I think this is all headed at some point. And if obviously, if you, if you didn't want to go there, and you don't want to, it's all Tim Fall hat twat nonsense to you. Excuse me, slightly burped. <laughs> Try to hide it. Need to fess up because I don't hide anything. Um, I will do that. And then you can watch if you want to or not, if you don't want to. Um, I will love you and leave you and tell you a few things. Firstly, keep remembering to go outside. Um, I must take you on my runs with me again soon, must I? Um, and looking up and breathing all the way in because none of this noise matters. None of this leadership race matters because it will be too late by October. I believe we will have um, some kind of riot, civil unrest by October because people can't afford to live in this country. And that's all coming. And none of this leadership race will be sorted by then. So it's entertainment, but don't let it obsess you. And the most important thing you can do is look after yourself and try and build yourself strong um, because that's what we've all got to do. I went running the other day, 10K, just going to say, first in my age group. <laughs> and that was really all about the fact that I just wanted to keep running in front of boys because it really, really, really pisses them off when an old bag like me with jiggly bits runs past them. <laughs> and I was absolutely fucked by the end. 
but because I'm such a stubborn twat, I just had to keep beating the boys and then ended up coming third. But the thing is, and the other thing that makes me so pathetic is that I, um, every time I ran past boys, I would hold my breath and act like I was fine. So I'd be like, <laughs> and then as I ran past the boys, I'd be like, <laughs> so that they wouldn't see that I was really pissed, <laughs> pissed, puffed. Anyway, um, thank you for loving me. Um, where's my book? Yes. So if, if you want one of these and I'm, I'm, I'm just saying it, I'm not trying to push this damn thing. It's done at Coffs with lovely Mark did it. Um, I can write you a note in it and I really like doing that. I think it's, yes it is, it's in the link maybe still, unless I changed it to like, fuck you. But yeah, it's in the link, Katie's Arms. Um, and then we send them out from here at home. There's no publicist because no one would take me. Because um, they're all scared, including Farage, including GB News. You get the gist. And otherwise, I need to tell you about two dates. One is 6th of May, Cirque, I'm reading, obviously, Circus Tavern Perfleet, where they do the darts. <laughs> Come on. Next year, I know, I know we don't have any money. We're going to keep ticket prices. I don't even, I don't even, I don't even shit if I'm paid or not. Um, we're going to do stand up and we're going to laugh together. And also Blackpool. Um, on the 13th or 14th of May. I'm going back to do stand-up next year. So if you can make it for a weekend, fuck, just come to feel better. And I need to let you know, I think we talked about this last week, but Wales. I'll be in Wales with Alex on the 20th of August. And I know you might be like, oh, Wales is far. Or like, I don't necessarily like the Welsh. But I'm banned from lots of parts of Wales. Let's not hold it against them. They teach maths to children in Welsh and therefore they need all the help we can bring them. So let's go and give love to Wales and I can give you all a cuddle when we're there. And can I come to Ipswich? Yes. Um, the book's also on Amazon but you don't have to do that shit. That's why I'm lovely Mark made this one with a hardcover. We send it out from my home. Um, we do it at cost. It has a letter that I wrote in to everybody and it means you don't have to go near Amazon. Um, so you could just go to the link, um, Katie's Arms, for people specifically that didn't want um, to go near Amazon, because Amazon are a bunch of twats, a bit like Uwethi Thunak. Um, so maybe come to Wales and I can see you there. Otherwise, uh, see you somewhere on the road. I know that I'm going to be back on the road in the UK soon because um, this country is going to boil over. And uh, frankly, my darlings, uh, I'm here for it. And you'll find me at the front. <laughs> So we'll see you next week. Um, love, love to everybody. And do keep having an eye, keep an eye on how short you think Rithi Thunak is. I'm saying five foot two. If you think differently, um, let me know. <laughs> and if you can find a venue anywhere, we're just working actually with a lady who might have me in her underwear shop. <laughs> if you can find a venue, I'll come uh, because we're going to have to hang on tight to get through this next bit together. Okay, lots of love to everybody and I'll no doubt see, I'll see you next week when maybe we might be ready for Wiffy. <laughs> see you later.